For those of you who don't know, I've recently returned from a really nice trip to Iceland. It was only a few days, but I've never been to Iceland. I've never seen the Northern Lights before, and I've never really experienced a cold country like that before as well. So a number of things happened. Firstly, obviously, I vlogged the whole thing. If you want to see on Transcend Your Limits, there's a lot of nice videos and like well-edited things of, of Iceland and Reykjavik. But more interestingly for you guys, I had literally the most intense, vivid, profound, even scary at times dreams that, I, that I've had in my entire life in Iceland. And it was only, I was only there for three or four days. The bed was nothing special. I mean, it was a comfortable bed, memory foam. I had a small memory foamy pillow thing. Uh, the temperature of the room was about normal. There was heaters, but it was cold outside. So I don't know what it was. Okay, I don't know if it's something to do with like where I was in the world. Um, people have reported feeling like certain energies in, in Scandinavia, for example, in the, in the top half of the world. I don't know if it's that, I don't know if it was the cold, or just like being in a new location. But I've never experienced dreams this vivid, this was insane, like this was really, really detailed, profound, like storylines that morphed into other storylines and, and like the feeling would just shift from one moment to the other. People would enter the dream, characters, different themes, it was really crazy. You know, normally my dreams are nowhere near that complicated and they're normally quite profound, but nowhere near that level. So I don't know, I really have no idea why my dreams were so incredibly detailed on my trip to Iceland. Yeah, I just wanted to put this video out and, and ask you guys essentially what you think it could be. I want to try and involve you more in the comments and like have a more of a, an interaction with, with you guys regarding this stuff. So what do you think it was? Like, I mean, I was in Iceland, it was the first time I've had a cold country. I've never been to a really cold country. It was my first time, it was the furthest north I'd ever been. So, I mean, I've been to Scotland before, but I think this was obviously a lot further north in Iceland. Um, my geography is not great, by the way, so if I'm making any mistakes, let me know. Yeah, I don't know what what it could have been. The only thing I would say is that the dreams started on the first night. So the first night I slept in Iceland was the first intense dream, and then I had one every single night until I left. And then almost like clockwork, when I returned back to England, uh, the dreams went back to their normal state. You know, I could still remember them, but they were nowhere near as vivid. Like, nowhere near. It's not even on the same level. I'm actually, I'm, I'm literally trying to work out what it could have been myself, because it's really baffled me. I don't know what it could have been. I mean, I know that when, when we travel, when we experience new things, we do get an intense boost in our dreams, because it's our brain's way of sort of organising the memories, our short-term memories, into long-term memories. And that process, if we, if we happen to be lucid, in the middle of it, or if we happen to interrupt our sleep during the middle of it, you know, we can get in the middle of that process and sort of experience a more vivid dream, or a lucid dream even. The only thing that I can think of that might have caused this sort of dream is an interruption to my sleep. Because from what I remember, there was a, lo a really loud scraping noise every single morning at 6am, and I think what it was in retrospect was actually the snow or ice being cleared from the roads and I think they use these bulldozer type things I only saw one of them but I assume that that's what they used at 6am um, and and it would scrape the snow diagonally across the road to make a path for the cars to go on that is the only and I do remember vividly hearing that noise two or three of the mornings as well that's the only thing that I can really think of that might have had an effect or that it might have bled through into my dreams uh, and if it was that, it reinforces the point I've been making for a long time, which is that, inter and Daniel Love has made this point as well, interruption of your sleep is usually quite an effective way of having more lucid dreams, uh, or certainly having more dreams that you remember, because you're awakening part of your brain, but not so much of your brain that you become awake and you forget the dream. So by interrupting your sleep, whether it's through a noise, like a snowplow, or having a cat or a baby or something, or even just through setting an alarm on your phone, you are able to increase the chances of becoming lucid, have more vivid dreams that you remember, and ultimately improve your dream scenario, right? So you might, you might think that in, interruption of your sleep is a bad thing. It's not always a bad thing. It just depends on how much of your sleep is interrupted. If it's just a sound, I mean, I slept really, really well in Iceland, despite the sound of the snowplow interrupting my sleep. It wasn't enough to wake me up. It was just enough that I could, I guess, become more lucid or have more of an awareness and uh, experience more of a vivid dream. It didn't interrupt my sleep in terms of making me feel worse the next morning. I actually felt really well rested most of the days. Um, 
So I would say that some interruption, like some auditory interruption or some stimuli in that sense, can be a good thing. And the only interruption that I would say is not good long term is the wake back to bed method, which involves completely waking up and getting out of bed and then going back to bed. But from my experience, and this, you know, this, uh, this thing in Iceland reinforces it, some auditory interruption to your sleep in the early hours of the morning can very easily lead to more lucid dreams and at the very worst case scenario, more vivid dreams. Anyway, that's it for today, done. Thanks for watching guys. This video and this channel are supported by my Patreon followers. Please consider giving just a dollar a month to support this channel or just click the links in the description. You'll find links to various lucid dreaming products, articles, techniques and tutorials. If you did enjoy this video, please click the notification bell and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Why are you still watching this? You should have clicked one of my related videos by now, right? Or subscribed or gone onto my website or something like that.